So, uh, David Chandler, you've just taken part in a discussion on what is radical politics today, and according to your contribution, you are not entirely sure that there's any politics left, let alone no, 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 politics left. I'm not sure that there are any politics left, because politics traditionally operates at the level of governments, and the level of government's capacity to be able to intervene and to control and to regulate. And the dominant story of politics today is that the governments don't have power. Power seems to have moved to the global level, which means that governments are just like us as individuals. They can aspire to, to good things, they can try and help other people, they can do campaigning, but they're not responsible for what happens. Even at the most basic level in British societies where there's social and economic problems, the government says, you know, we can't be responsible, we can't solve them. And, and, and social and economic issues are seen as individual problems of individual responsibility. So for example, I was in Nottingham a few days ago, and the, the, the Labour MP there with some of the highest levels of social deprivation in his constituency, where there's highest levels of teenage pregnancies, lowest levels of university uptake, says that in order to resolve these questions, we've got to get at those individuals that are being socially excluded. We've got to address problems like the lack of attention in schools and detect people that might be having problems at an early age. He said if we could get in touch with them when they're in their mother's womb, it would be even better. And the earlier the intervention, uh, the better it will be. And the idea is that social and economic problems are the responsibility of individuals making the wrong choices. If we can help them, empower them, give them more capacities to make the right choices will address these questions. Now to me, that's the death of politics. It may look like politics, there's a government, there's an MP, there's a social and economic question, but it's no longer a political question, it's now a psychological question of how an individual responds to their environment and how we can help them respond in a different way. And I think if you look at that picture, we can see that played out on a, a global level or an international level. Uh, what my main academic interest is in international state building. We say exactly the same thing as when we're talking to a young mother on a housing estate in Nottingham. We say that these states that are held to be failing can't just be left alone. They can't deal with issues autonomously, but equally, we as the international community or the West can't just dictate to them. We can't control. All we can do is facilitate and empower and enable states and their societies to make better decisions. This is a world where there is no longer any politics, there is no longer any accountability for power. Power is free from politics and therefore presents itself merely as capacity building, as enabling and as empowering. And I think that um, that makes it very difficult to think about radical approaches to the political. What about those people who might argue that, in fact, what we're seeing um, sort of at this beginning of the 21st century is uh, a whole host of new networks, of new places where actually politics is being done, and that we're simply not looking at the right places, either very locally on the ground or through virtual networks, the social media, etc., uh, etc. Et Are those playing a role? Um, I think they, they can do useful things and play a role. And I think it's difficult to call it politics. As soon as we engage in politics, which isn't where there's formal political power through representation of the state, we might be doing all, we use, all sorts of useful and helpful things. But I think it's very easy for our activities to just end up making us feel better or, or not really to do as much as we might think they might do. Because once our politics is no longer instrumental and strategic and aimed at power, it can be quite easy to engage in politics as an ethical act, where we think about, I don't know, maybe a lot of people would argue that switching their lights off when they leave a room, turning the tap off when they brush their teeth, is a political act. You know, that's helping the environment. If we all did it, it would change things. But you can see that that's a, if that is a political act, it's a political act that doesn't involve you with other people in society. Similarly, we might make protests, um, or we might sign petitions, or we might wear armbands. Um, or protest on, pub, on big public demonstrations, but it's, it's more that the act itself is what we value, or the statement, or the values, or our awareness. And I think the less we're engaged in collective political movements, where we're actually strategically thinking about how we can win the struggle for representation, or how we can instrumentally change things, that our politics is no longer politics, it's an ethical act, a meaningful act, or a socially caring act. But to my mind, it isn't 
politics in the way that we used to understand politics. It's not about control. In fact, control and power are often seen as bad. And if, if we do politics with a view that we don't want power, it's quite clear that there's a danger that that would just um, result in something that's more like a religious act. Do you think that these acts that are nevertheless meaningful or socially caring, as, as you say, do you think that they can help, uh, nevertheless, to start to build political alliances? Do you think they might be just sort of one, one step below a political act in terms of organization? I don't want to be hard line on this, <laughs> yeah. but I don't think we can do politics without power, or politics without the aspiration of power. When we do things that collectively try and help people, that's valuable work. And when we collectively try and publicise things or make people aware, that's also valuable. But I think that we should keep a connection between politics and power, because politics has to be about either holding politicians to account or trying to achieve power to change things and transform things ourselves. One last question. Um, you were referring to the fact that politics has has changed and it is no longer the uh, politics the way that we would have referred to it, um, say, 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. But actually, it strikes me that um, some of what you're saying is about the fact that um, the, the, slogan, the slogan that the personal is political has been taken, in a sense, it's been taken too far to its logical conclusion. And in many ways, that's interesting because it, it predates the big sort of, you know, individualistic, neoliberal, um, you know, rise in, in, in the 1980s. Um, are we, are we, in a sense, sort of, you know, the the unruly, ungrateful, disengaged children of the 1960s? Well, I don't think that the problem is us. I think for an individual, personal is political in a way. You know, we care a lot about our values and our meaning and and how we might be seen in our, in our, by our friends or our colleagues. I think the thing that really has changed is that governments have taken on the slogans of 60s anti-politics activists and governments say, you know, that for them it's not about power. If you think about the shift, say a major thing with the Labour government has been a shift towards an ethical foreign policy and that's all been about values and meanings and how we express them. So when a government says the personal is political, uh, I think that's where the real problem set in, and I think that's that's the real problem. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.